Okay. Is it on now? Yep. All right. <laughs> I was watching one of the preachers on TV this morning, and they were talking about these little kids, real small kids, and they say, well, what does it take to get to heaven? And uh, this little kid, you know, well, you got to be good, you got to be mama and this and all that, little kid stuff. Come to this last little boy and ask him, well, have, well what's the matter? What, uh, what, what does it take to get to heaven? He looked up at her and said, you got to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. <clears throat> Scripture reading today is at First Peter 1, uh, 1, 3 through 5, and 10 through 12, and 17 through 19. Bear with me, Lord. <clears throat> Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into the inheritance that can never, <clears throat> that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time concerning this salvation. The prophets who spoke of this grace that was <coughs> to come to you searched intensely and with greatest care, trying to find out the time and the circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them would <coughs> was appointing when he predicted the suffering of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. <clears throat> it was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but, but you, when they spoke of things that have not been told you by those who have <clears throat> preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things, since you call on the Father who judge each person's work and patiently live out their time as foreigners here reverent fear, in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. So, to get to heaven, you must die first, Merle. Is that what you're saying? So, we should think about how we should live before that day comes, right? Let's start with prayer. Father in heaven, we do thank you and praise you. Lord, we adore you. We thank you that you first loved us, that we would not even know what love is without you showing us through creating us and through redeeming us back by the precious blood of Jesus Christ that he would give up heaven, that he would give up his life freely to save me and give me the Holy Spirit to reside inside of me, that I could come freely to you, Father. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful love. Help us to not take that lightly, but to serve you with all that we have until that day when death comes or that day when we meet you face to face because Jesus returns, however it may be. Lord, help us to live a life of worth, to run this race that has been set before us, that you've put before us, Lord, to be a light for others. And we just pray for those that we come in touch with, that we may boldly preach the gospel message, and that, Lord, that you will uh, save who you will save. We just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So each Sunday, if you don't know, well, not Sunday, it happens prior to Sunday, I just send out a message, a scripture that Merle's going to read and a sermon title. And sometimes I tell Debbie a little bit about it, what it's about and sometimes not. And she picks out the songs and they always match. And the songs that Sherry picked out today, because she picked them out, match too, but she knows the music part, so she puts them in order how they need to be and stuff. And I never even really looked at the songs. She gave me some to pick and I just said, oh, I know that one and picked that one out of a grouping. 
But they're so perfect on what I'm going to preach about today. Heaven came down. Who can ascend to heaven? Only he who came down from heaven and whoever puts their faith in him. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. Day I will never forget. Is that how you feel? After I wandered in darkness away, and last week I talked about the darkness that came before Jesus died. And when he died, light was there. You know, people would think that, just thinking naturally, well, the darkness came when, when Jesus died. No, that's when Jesus died, that's the first glimmer of hope. Because he paid the price of our sins. And then when we have resurrection morning, we know that nothing could extinguish the light. We watched Risen here um, Friday night, if you didn't read it. and it, It's about a centurion that goes to find the body of Christ because they don't want an uprising and everything. And one of the things that they depict that way is that the ropes that sealed the um, big stone that was over the entrance of the tomb, that the ropes just exploded. I thought that was neat in that. They weren't cut. Any time. They just looked like they were exploded because the light could not be bound inside. inside. I wandered in darkness away until Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend. He met the needs of my heart. Shadows dispelling with joy, I am telling. He made all the dark. I don't know how the rest of the verse. No, it ain't, because I looked. Then I got faith as a victory. What's the rest? He made the darkness depart. That's all right. But love lifted me. I was walking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. What's in the depths of the sea except utter darkness, no way to escape? Death has taken over. But death has no sting because Jesus Christ laid down his life for me. It's all right, we're good. <laughs> and then the words that, that Merle read from Peter that all these Old Testament saints were living a life by faith, and we're at Hebrews chapter 11 now, that faith chapter, living a life of faith so that we could know and experience faith. And they never knew the promise that God was going to send His one and only Son. You have that joy. If they live such wonderful lives, such faithful lives, and they never knew the name Jesus Christ, how should you be living your life so that your children and their children and their children inherit the same faith that you have? So let me pick up with Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. And remember, Hebrews is written to that church. It tells you all about the Old Testament. The author is very eloquent, bringing all that together, how Jesus is greater than anything else, but he doesn't want them to lose their faith because times are getting tough. And I think every one of you thinks that time's going to get tougher before they get better. <laughs> and that times will probably be tougher for our children. We need to walk a life of faith. You need to listen to this chapter. You need to study this chapter and look at it. And in Hebrews chapter 10, we get to the point of, Let us draw, verse 22, near to God with a sincere heart, with the full assurance that faith brings. And in chapter 11, we're going to define what that faith is, and we're going to see all those examples. Having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from the guilty conscience, because we don't have that anymore. The offerings of bulls and goats could never clear our conscience. And having our bodies washed with pure water, living water from Jesus Christ. So let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another towards love and good deeds. i got to stop there a minute. Are you doing that? Not just because we have a movie here at church or because we do this or that. Are you doing that? Are you spurring one another to a life full of good deeds? Because Jesus said, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds. Are you living out your Christian faith? If you study and read God's Word and pray, but you don't live out your faith, then your light's not going to be seen by other people. And then your answer is going to be like you said before on some of the others. We get to heaven by being good or whatever. That's a lie from the devil. You are good because Jesus lives inside of you. You are holy, sanctified, set apart so that you can live a life that you could never live otherwise. And that's why when people see the way you used to live and then they see the way that you do live now, then they can't help but ask you, as Peter says. 
not giving up meeting together, as some get in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we receive the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sin is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and a raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. We were enemies when Christ died for us, every single one of us. But if you believe in Jesus Christ and what He has done for you, what He's offering you, then you're His friend rather than His enemy. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated an unholy thing, the blood of the covenant that sanctified them, and who has insulted the Spirit of grace? If you are saved, if you know Jesus Christ, then you better be living for Him or you better go back to the drawing board and say, Am I really saved? For we know Him who said, It is mine to avenge, I will repay, and again the Lord will judge His people. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Remember those early days after you had received the light and you endured in a great conflict full of suffering? Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insults and persecution, and other times you stood side by side with those who were so, mis who were so treated. You suffered along with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that yourselves had, a better and la had better and lasting possessions. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what He promised. You have done the will of God. You are living as a light to this world. You are doing good deeds before men, and then you will be rewarded. <clears throat> For in just a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay, but my righteous one will live by faith. I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back, but we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. The author has made such a dynamic statement here of how much Christ is better than anything in the world because the church is suffering and many are falling to lies or leaving the truth because of the persecution that's come up among them. <sighs> Terrible thing. Many fall out of the church today simply because they got something better to do. They don't have time. At least these were being persecuted and left the faith. Come on. It seems as if God is dead in the church in the United States. The numbers keep dwindling because there are so many idols, so many temptations, so many other ways rather than the way, the truth, and the life. Oh, what a time that your light needs to be shining brighter than ever. If you're being persecuted, you long to die or for the suffering to end. And yeah, you might go and walk away from the light, but when things are so good, the thing is, is I don't need God. And that's the world that we're living at today in the United States. Now, are people suffering in the church? Oh, yeah. There are people suffering in the church. There always will be, and that's what Hebrews 11 talks about again. All those that have suffered so that you could be brought together with them and be perfect, made, made complete. We'll get to that. That word faith... You're going to see it 24 more times in Hebrews chapter 11. But before we get there, I want to tell you about the darkness and the light again so that you will live as a child of light. In Genesis 1, we read, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw the light was good, and He separated the light from the darkness. You are a child of light. The Spirit of God has come to reside in you. You are His priest. You are the temple where He dwells. He has fellowship with you. He tabernacles with you. Does the light shine through you? Do you have the light? Will you walk in the light? Will you follow Jesus' voice? Will you deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow after Jesus? Will you be that light so that your children see the light? John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that was made. 
In him was life, and the life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. You are a witness that you have seen the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was, was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet, but, <laughs> that complete contradiction, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. You have been adopted by God as his, as his very own child if you believe. And you have an obligation to live as that child should live. I told you last week to consider that darkness that came before Jesus' death and that the light could not be stamped out and that you're a child of light. And I told you to think about things like doubt, fear, despair, loss, death, and darkness so that you could replace them with belief, peace, hope, gain, life, and light. The darkness is there because men committed sins. And the, John goes on to say in John that the verdict is there, that men love the darkness more than the light is why they won't come to the light. But if you've received Jesus Christ, then walk in the light. Be the light to this world. <clears throat> the light will expose the darkness. You can live as a child of light. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you if you believe. In John, we also read the words in John 12, verse 36, Believe in the light while you have the light, so that you may become children of light. And those verses that I was talking about that come right after John 3, 16, verse 18, Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come in the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come in the light for, for fear that the de their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. Now here's the problem again. People say they have the light, but the world can't see it. Because they don't live as a child of light. They still live as a child of darkness. Oh, but I don't do those sins. I don't do those sins I used to do. I, I, I've cleaned up my life and I don't do this. I don't do that. But are you living as a child of light? Are you loving your enemies? Do you hate the persecution and, and things in this world that are unfair, that aren't right? Are you an ambassador for Jesus Christ, as though God was making His reconciliation through you? Or do you just claim that you have the light? And I'm not as bad as these over here. I'm not this far. I've, I've come here. Are you living as a child of light? As Jesus did. Walking in His footsteps. Following after Him, no matter what it takes. Is it what drives you? To know that God loves you so much that He gave His one and only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. So back to Hebrews chapter 10. So don't throw away your confidence, verse 35. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you've done the will of God, you will receive what He promised. For in just a little while, He who is coming will come and not delay. But my righteous one will live by faith, not claim something. They will live by it. And that's why the people will see the light in you. I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but instead we belong to those who have faith and are being saved. Now, we're going to see it 20 however many times it was. Now, faith is the confidence in what we hope for, the assurance about what we do not see. It's what motivates us, what moves us. It is not something that we hope for, that I hope it's going to be nice today so that I can go fishing. I know that every day that I live for Jesus will have eternal rewards in heaven and one day I will meet Him face to face. 
whether I'm suffering or whether I am in, in being blessed with the things that are going on in my life, whatever reasons, I will walk as Jesus walked because the Spirit of God lives inside of me. This verse 2 is a thing that the ancients were commended for, so let's take that into consideration. Verse 3, By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. It's obvious, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Now we start getting examples. By faith Abel brought, brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith Abel still exists even though he is dead. Abel is remembered for giving what? A good and pleasing sacrifice to God. He is also remembered because his brother killed him. But he lives on. You can't put out the light. If your light shines before others, they saw the light, whether you're persecuted and died for it or whether you're blessed for it. Do they see the light in you by the things that you do? By faith, Abel still speaks even though he is dead. Verse 5, by faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. Let that give you hope. This is a man that walked and pleased God, and then he was no more on the face of this earth. Before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. I'm saved. And I'm still kind of living the way I was. I'm, I'm afraid to proclaim. But I'm all good. I got my fire insurance and I love Jesus. I go to church every once in a while. And, you know, if somebody asks me something, I'm, I'll try to get the nerve to tell them. Or I can't keep quiet <laughs> because of the hope that God has given me through Jesus Christ. That I understand that verse that we just quote all the time. God love me so much. And He loves you so much that He gave Jesus to pay the sin debt that you could never pay. And that Jesus rose again, giving me hope that I know that I have eternal life. I don't have to wonder about what happens to me when I die. I have the, the assurance that comes with knowing Jesus Christ. I have peace that surpasses all understanding. God dwells with me. And I am part of the body so I need to be actively part of the body. And when one part of the body suffers, as we see so much here, I suffer too. Even though I'm not suffering here in the United States, don't let me be complacent. Let me do things to help my brothers who are being persecuted. If it's simply getting on my knees and praying more for them. Before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Then we get a bunch more examples here and I'm going to go through them fast. Okay, You can follow if you want to. I just want you to see the pattern and then we're going to talk more about it. By faith Noah, when warned about things yet not seen in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By faith. By his faith he commended the world and became heir of righteousness that is in keeping with Faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to a place he would later receive as inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did his children, Isaac and Jacob, who were, were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who made the promise. And so from this one man, as, as he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the skies and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting they were foreigners and strangers on earth. Let me interject right here. They did not know the name Jesus Christ. You do. 
<clears throat> they only saw him and welcomed him from a distance, admitting they were foreigners and strangers on earth. Verse 14, people who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own, not longing for the things here. If they had been thinking of the country that they had left, they would have had the opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice, who had embraced the promises. <clears throat> he, he who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son, even though God had said to him, It is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reckoned that God would even raise the dead, and so in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from the dead. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of, of Joseph's sons and worshipped as he leaned on top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when, he was, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child. And they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. He re regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ, didn't know who he was, as a greater value from the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead for his reward. By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw who, him who is vi invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the application of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land, but when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And what more shall I say? I don't have time to tell you about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdom, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refused to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskin and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what God had promised. Since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Now, so many times when this passage is preached, we break apart each individual and look at what they did and everything. But I want you to take the passage as a whole as we're reading through here. Some of these were mighty men and women. Some of them seemed like complete and utter failures. Some of them were not what we would necessarily want to pattern our life after, but yet we see that they were commended for their faith, and their faith lived on. Don't you want your faith to live on? I mean, i I, I got to say this. If, if there's anything I want in this world... It's for my wife to know Jesus Christ. It's for my son to know Jesus Christ. For his wife to know Jesus Christ. For each of my grandchildren to know Jesus Christ. And their kids to know Jesus Christ. For you to know Jesus Christ. For the, my friends and acquaintances to know Jesus Christ. For even my, my enemies to know Jesus Christ. Yeah, I put them in a little bit of order there. Because <laughs> I want my family. So I can go back to that verse about Noah and know that he condemned the world because of his holy fear of God and he built an ark. I don't have to, have to know how long it took or, or how he was ridiculed or anything else, but that his family went in that ark. And then I saw how each generation after Abraham was blessed and they followed in his footsteps. I know the ones that weren't. I have the examples here. And I know some that were sawn in two and some that were others. We don't really know who was sawn in two to say that one exactly, but... And numerous people that we don't even know who are named here.
But they all walk by faith, and here's what Jesus told us to do, so that their children and their children's children and their children's children would walk by faith. It was recognized when Jesus came in to Jerusalem on Palm Sunday that He was the Messiah, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. But how quickly can we yell again, we don't need Jesus Christ. I've got all the things of this world. This is a scary place to be. This one over here, sorry. <laughs> it's a scary place to be because I proclaim Jesus Christ, but I don't live like Him. That is a dangerous, dangerous, dangerous place to be. I'm a Jew. I'm a child of God. I have Abraham as my father. But yet, only a few believed in Jesus Christ. And even out of his twelve, one would be his betrayer. The others would truly give up everything to follow after him. And thank goodness because the church is still alive today. Do you see the pattern that is there though? Faith. Faith is how you live your life. Now I've got to contemplate that and say, I don't live in a land where I'm being persecuted. I live in a land of opportunity, so don't let the opportunities become my God. Let me know how I can be rich like that, that guy from Luke that, that had all the grain and, and he said, I'll build bigger houses from, for bigger barns for my grain. No, I don't want to be him. Because I'm rich, I want to be rich with others. I have freedom to worship, so I want to worship. I have freedom to tell people without fear that I'm going to be killed, so I want to tell people. I have things, so I want to give to the poor and needy so that, so that they won't be impoverished. I want to pray for those that are, that are persecuted in the church because I feel their pain. When I stub my toe, out, I just did. <laughs> I know that pain, my body felt it. Not just my toe felt it. My whole body felt it. So when there are people suffering in Ukraine, then I want to pray for them. I want to pray for the Christians that are there. I want to pray for the ones that aren't saved there. I want to pray for those who don't know Jesus Christ so that the love of God fills this earth. It's what he told me to do, to go out and tell the good news, to proclaim it in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the utter ends of the earth. And he will return and he will bring his reward with him. Well, let me remind you again of the words of Hebrews chapter 10. My righteous one will live by faith, and I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, if you believe in Him, then you should clearly know that your mission is to live a holy life and to tell others about the hope that you have. To break it down as simple as I can break it down. And if you're not living a life where your light shines, you're not going to be able to proclaim, you're going to be labeled as a hypocrite. And if you're proclaiming and you don't live the life that's that way, you're going to be a hypocrite. But if you live a light that shines and people will say, Hey, what is this hope that you have? And you can tell them. Then you can leave the saving up to God. It's not your responsibility, but you can be the hands and feet of Jesus. Ephesians 2 Verse 1 says, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live. When you followed the ways of this world and the rulers of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who now is at work in those who are disobedient. All of us used to live among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh, following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving wrath. But Jesus took that wrath out on the cross. Verse 4, but because of His great love, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive by giving us the light of life. With Christ, even when we were dead in transgression, it is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages He might show the incomparable riches of His grace expressed in His kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Are you living by faith? Wednesday night I was given the last little Bible story that we'll give at the end, and I've tried been taking these Old Testament saints and building up and po pointing each one to how they point to Jesus. And we talked about salvation through Jesus Christ, and I took my phone and tried to hand it to one of them. I said, here, this is a free gift to you. And he was like, nope. <laughs> There's strings attached. That's your phone. I don't want it. And perfect example because his sister said, boom, and took it. 
And I said, that's, that's the offer that's being given to you. It might sound foolish to you that I'm going to give you my phone and everything. I did tell her to give it back, but God won't tell you to do that. But I said, now it's up to you what you do with that phone. And she started messing around with it. But see, my phone had a password on it too. But you've been given the keys to the kingdom of heaven. You've been given the Holy Spirit to live a life that you could never live before, to give you the words you don't know what to, what to say when that time comes, to give you the, the, the faith and courage that you can stand up and be martyred if that's what it takes. And we see that in this chapter here, even the ones that are unnamed, that they lived by faith because they set their eyes on something greater and they did not know the name Jesus. So how are you living your life in comparison? And are you living it in such a way that together we'll be made complete? Faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance of what we do not see. So don't throw away what you have. Don't take it lightly. A life of faith speaks to others and it pleases God. Did you catch that from Hebrews chapter 11? And those that live by faith will spend an eternity in heaven and they will be richly rewarded. In verse 6 of Hebrews 11, you mark that one. <laughs> and without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. A life of faith is a holy, set-apart life, no willful sinning still, Joyfully, joyfully living and proclaiming because of what Christ has done and others will see it. <clears throat> By faith Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. And by his faith he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith, when Abraham was called to go to a place where he had later received his inheritance, he obeyed and went. Now, I'm going to just show you these patterns of these heroes again. Abraham, he did not know where he was going. He was like a stranger in his foreign country. He was heirs with those who received the same promise. He was looking forward to a city with a foundation whose architect and builder was God. Sarah... She considered him faithful who made the promises. <clears throat> living, these were still living by faith when they died. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. They were foreigners and strangers on earth, looking for a country of their own, not thinking of the country they had left. Even when God tested them, they embraced His promises. Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead. <laughs> You know that's for a fact because of Jesus himself. Down to Isaac, Isaac blessed his children. He worshiped. Joseph gave instructions. Moses' parents hid him. They were not afraid of the king's edict. They refused to be known, Moses refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated. Rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin, regarded disgrace for Christ as greater value than the treasures of Egypt. Looking ahead to his reward. Persevered because he saw, saw him who is invisible. Kept the Passover and the application of blood. Oh, how these point to Jesus and what he's done for me. The true lamb. All these people lived for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years with a promise of a Messiah. Jesus Christ is the Messiah. He is the Savior of the world. He is the King of all kings. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. Are you doing it now? Down to verse 36. Some faced jeers and flogging. Some. We don't even know who they were. And even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. Verse 38. The world was not worthy of them. 
whether it's a named hero or heroine here, or whether it's an unnamed one, whether they had a life where they had good things or they lived in a cave, whether they were martyred or whether they lived a long, peaceful life and were taken from this earth. The first two examples are that way. One snuffed out early and one taken away because he pleased God. We all are part of this body. We all have a purpose to proclaim God's glory, His faith, His love, and we know it especially because of His love for us through Christ Jesus. Verse 39, They were all commended. They received a commendation for their faith. Yet none of them received what had been promised. Verse 40, Since God had planned something better for us. You ever caught that before? Without you living as the church, you're not completing their faith. It was God's will that all men be saved. And now it's your time to be one of these heroes or heroines of the Old Testament by proclaiming a life lived by faith. Whether you climb mountains or whether you stay in the valley lows, whether you do mighty things and people remember your name or no one remembers your name, it is your duty to proclaim the faith that you have if in fact you have faith. And God does not take lightly those who shrink back. And those who proclaim faith will live by faith. Sometimes you might think you're insignificant. You might, you, you, you might think that what you have to offer God is not much. What you have to offer God is you. In the circumstances you're in, in the life that you live, how you bring Him glory and honor, and how you proclaim His name to others. Who is going to tell your children and grandchildren more than you're going to tell them about Jesus Christ? And they're going to know it by the way that you live. I talked to my son a little bit this week via text. And got to leave him a little thing, and I don't know what he thought about or not thought about it, but the conversation was brought up because he saw a bunch of face, Facebook posts. <laughs> we can use Facebook to God's glory so much, but most of what you see on it is just utter garbage. And he saw a bunch of Christians that he knew that were bashing people because of their sin. I think I remember from John chapter 8 where the people walked away who thought they were religious, and then Jesus said, does anyone condemn you? Because he wants to commend you by living by faith. And he said, neither do I condemn you. He said, arise and go and sin no more. You can tell someone about their sin without belittling them. Without thinking you're better than you are. His comment was, you know, it's sad when Christians live like the devil. And you know, it, that part stings with me because I know that my son has the head knowledge. I hope that he has the heart knowledge. But I know that because of so many Christians, and I can take this conversation and say about my dad, and I can take this conversation and say about others. They don't walk the walk, they walk because of the other Christians they've seen. I know that's an excuse, don't get me wrong. It's a reason to let your light shine that much brighter, guys. Because they do see people out there in the world that profess to be Christians and they don't live. Or they believe a prosperity gospel. Or believe a blended gospel. Or they believe whatever. And then when times come like there are in this Hebrew church, they turn away or they believe a lie. Because the one that's supposed to be teaching them is not grounded in the truth and not living a life by faith. So that they see your light because of how you live differently. So that Alan in this list is one who lived a life by faith. And his children and their children saw it. And they said, I want to enter into this ark who is Jesus Christ. It is a dreadful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God. 
Not my will, but yours, Father. Jesus prayed in the garden, Take this cup of wrath from me, but not my will, but yours, Father. Be satisfied with daily bread. Reach out to Him whether you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death or if you're on the mountaintop praising Him. Proclaim God's goodness for, to you, what He has done for you through Jesus Christ. You are His child. And no one can take away your inheritance. So proclaim it boldly. You will receive what, he is, what is promised. In just a little while, He who is coming will come and not delay. And my righteous one will live by faith. I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are being destroyed, but to those who have faith and are being saved. I think the next chapter starts out with fixing our eyes on Jesus Christ, doesn't it? Because that's how you have to walk. So that you are firmly founded, which we go right back to the beginning of Hebrews and the purpose for the letter. Be firmly founded in Jesus Christ. Build your foundation upon Him so that when the waves of life come crashing in, that what you have built will be able to stand. Realize that you are a priest building on the cornerstone that is Jesus Christ and you are building stones that build a, that build a house and it's part of your job to build that and you're building it together with the body of Christ and when someone suffers in the body of Christ you're there to comfort them and when they rejoice you're there to rejoice with them and your ultimate goal is to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ proclaiming the good news of salvation until that day becomes reality to when your faith your hope becomes sight as the songs sing out Father in heaven we do thank you and praise you we adore you we lay our lives before you because you came and dwelt among us, the light of life, the light that will extinguish all darkness. And you have given us the light of life through Jesus Christ when we first believed in faith. So help us to walk in faith. Help us to live a life of faith. Help us as the men that are here to guide our, our households, our wives, our children to not be so worried about how we can financially provide for them or anything else, but how we can provide for them true meat, Lord, the meat of Jesus Christ, the, the gospel that has become flesh and dwelt among us. Father, we thank you for Jesus' example. We thank you that even as a human being, he didn't want to face the things that he had to suffer, but he knew that he, his suffering would be for overall good, that it would bring people to the throne room of God. We thank you for the darkness that was there before the light, and we know that the light cannot be extinguished because Jesus Christ has risen from the dead, and he said he would return for us, and we have no doubt whatsoever that we will spend eternity in heaven with you because of our faith. So let that faith motivate us to live, to live a life that brings glory and honor to you so that we do the will of God, so that we receive the reward that you have before us, but even more that we can be a part being made perfect and complete with the body of Christ as a whole to show the world the light. And Lord, may you faithfully save those that you have given for us to uh, share the light, to teach. Help us to teach them diligently. We pray for our children and our grandchildren. We pray for even our enemies, Father. It is your will that men come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And you have given us that message to proclaim. So we ask you for boldness to proclaim for power to live, and we just pray that you work out mighty miracles before us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.